So welcome back to video number two, which is platform comparisons. And the reason why this is so important is because the problem and the reason why most people fail at specific social platforms is they enter that platform thinking that they can use the what they do on Facebook on Instagram or what they do on YouTube on Instagram. But the reality is that you are entering a totally different culture. So imagine entering a totally different culture and trying to do something that works in a different culture. That's not going to work, right? So you need to know the differences and you need to make sure that you're in the right mindset before you actually move in. So did you know that there's a big difference between Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram? Well, we'll talk about that. So knowing how they behave, how users behave, how they expect you to behave, and their expectations of you are important, all right? So that increases your sales, your success rate, on all that. So this is where it's easy to fail as often. You know, we enter a specific culture, like I said, that has certain expectations, and not following these rules just gets you avoided or seen as a spammer. So you do not want to be seen as a spammer or be seen as an outsider. You want to be seen like you are part of the culture, all right? That's what I'm trying to get at. Here. So let's talk about the differences. YouTube, people go here to learn how to do something. So you got a lot of DIYers or people who like to do things themselves. Like say for example, you break something on your wall, you need to learn how to pass it up, you go on YouTube, you learn how to do things. Plus, people go there to kind of de-stress. They like to watch entertaining videos, they like to watch you know, people singing or people dancing or learn how to do something, basically. So that's what YouTube is. You can't really take that same concept and bring it over to Instagram because it's totally different, right? Facebook. Facebook is a great place for people to what's happening to discover what is happening in the world what their friends are doing what people that are, have similar interests are doing they can join groups and all of that so it's all about discovery all right so many different ways of discovery now Instagram on the other hand is where people come here to get inspiration to get ideas so they might have discovered something on Facebook they but they want to get more ideas about it from Instagram. So if you'll notice, Instagram is a platform with a lot of beautiful, aesthetically pleasing images. So that's another thing you want to make sure that you have really aesthetically pleasing images. So if you're not a person that create really good images, you're going to need to have a program to do that. And we'll talk more about that later on. You can use these programs to create beautiful looking quotes, beautiful looking images, and all that but that's something to keep in mind but people come here to get ideas they tend to follow brands they want to know more about the brand right they want to follow their favorite celebrities they want to follow the lifestyles they want to see what's happening so i'll give you some examples and concrete situations that you can actually get a better idea of how all of this works but really what i'm trying to set you up for is success and set you up for the right mindset so that you move in and you're able to close more sales, close more leads, generate more followers and fans. And that's the whole goal at the end of the day. Now, Instagram and Facebook have very different audiences. Now you'll notice now that Facebook has bought out Instagram, but they, they still have very totally different audiences. Something that works on Facebook may not work on Instagram. So just keep that in mind. Different platforms, even though something works there, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work at Instagram. And I'm going to show you how to make sure that you get things working and all that. Now, like I said, you'll notice that Instagram has a lot of aesthetically pleasing photos. So you'll need to make sure that you uh, focus on that and make sure that you show that your company, your brand, and all that looks really, really nice and appealing. Now, here's a little tip. 
on your Instagram profile, when people go to the Instagram profile, they're going to see about a, a few images and people will normally judge you based on the first nine photos in your profile. And based on that, they will decide to stay or they will decide to leave. So you got to make sure that you choose your best nine photos forefront. So when somebody comes to your Instagram profile, they see the best of the best, right? All right. So now that we've talked about that and now you have a better idea of how Instagram works, uh, let's jump on in and go to video number three and talk about how to start out on the right foot. All right, so welcome back. This is video number three, and let's talk about starting on the right foot. So you learned in the previous video that you can't jump on Instagram and just sell, sell, and sell. You can't do any type of direct selling. Um, selling is in a different way. It's a very indirect selling, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. And this is why most people fail. That's what they do. They jump on Instagram, assuming it's Facebook, and they can't figure out why they're not making sales, all right, or why they're not getting fans. So let's make sure that you start out on the right foot, all right? So the secret here is to build a brand or a lifestyle. So if you think about what I talked about earlier in the previous video, I said that people go to Instagram because they want to know more about a brand. Maybe they discovered the brand or the lifestyle in Facebook, but then they want to go to Instagram and they want to learn more. So this is where they follow uh, people and you'll see lifestyle wise, they'll post pictures of themselves. They'll post pictures of their life in relation to what they do just to basically build a personal relationship. So, Think about Facebook as, okay, I discovered you and I am more part of a community, but Instagram is like, okay, I get to see more about what's happening in your life, not just about related to what we're interested in, both of us, like shared interest wise, but I get to see what's in your life, what's happening, uh, what the good, the bad. So you're basically building a relationship. So the end of goal for you should be to become an influencer, which means, you know, a brand that will have real influence on people's decisions. So you can influence people by the pictures that you post basically. And people are waiting for that kind of stuff. And they want ideas. They want inspiration. They want quotes. So you'll notice a lot of quotes are on Instagram. You'll notice some quotes on Facebook as well, but you'll notice a good amount on Instagram and you'll notice a lot of uh, those type of images. So everything from about what to wear, what to buy, where to shop, what to do, and where to go. So you see what I'm saying here? It's a lifestyle mentality. You know, society has changed so drastically that back in the day, you could just say, go buy this, and they would go buy that. They would take your word for it. But now they want to see that you're genuine, that you're a real person that they can actually deal with. So uh, before you can sell, they need to get, you know, to know you and you need to get people to follow you, of course. Right. So you need to build a following before you can actually sell. So, like I said, in our society nowadays, people want to know you. They have discovered you on Facebook and they want to hear all about your lives, your drama, everything. Um, so now you got to pick and choose what you post. So let me give you an example here. Let's say that you are a scuba diver. All right. So on your Instagram profile, you would show a typical day as a scuba diver. So, you know, things you do, happy times, sad times, uh, things you run into problems you run into as a scuba diver, the type of equipment you would buy what tools are great, what tools are not, all that. So why would you want to do that? Well, I mean, if you think about the dollar signs, you think about the profit. As a scuba diver, you could be showcasing tools that you are using. And this could easily translate into, let's say, for example, a Shopify store where you sell scuba equipment, 
Maybe you can do an AliExpress drop shipping thing where you they buy the product, you ship it from AliExpress, you get a cut of it. And you don't even have to actually stock any type of inventory in your Shopify store. So that's something to look forward to from Instagram. People get, you, you get to indirectly sell about things because at the end of the day, people are going to want what you have. They feel, okay, if, if I have the same software tools or if I have the same tools or equipment that you have as a scuba diver or as whatever you're trying to do as a lifestyle brand, uh, they're more likely to buy it, right? So it can be Shopify store, it can be an affiliate promotion, it can be a sponsor post from a scuba gear company, which we'll talk more about later down the road. But before you can do all of that, you need to have a brand. You need to have the ability to create a lifestyle, right? So now let's move on to video number four and let's talk about how to build a brand and how to build a lifestyle and do it all properly. Okay, welcome back. This is video number four and let's talk about how to build a brand or a lifestyle. So now that you understand why you need to inspire people by building a brand attached to a lifestyle, let's discuss how you can actually do this in the real world, all right? So a brand is more than just a logo. You know, you can go on graphicriver.net or any other site and get a logo. That's not a brand, all right? I want you to understand that because I, I feel like a lot of people get confused. They feel like, okay, I'm going to get a logo. I'm going to get, get a website and I set it up and that's it. It's more than that. All right. So I want to make sure that we get in the right mindset. You're going to be able to succeed in all that. So it's an attachment or an identity. That's what a brand is. And the lifestyle itself just helps kind of build and grow the brand. Now you might be thinking, well, what if I don't have that lifestyle? Well, just wait a minute and I'll talk about that in just a minute. All right. So try to figure out as of now, what sort of identity you want to create as part of that brand and then figure out what people want to be like, what they aspire to be and all that, right? Because our society has changed to the point where people want to find their identity if they can find their identity inside of your brand, or even if it's just a little piece, they are more likely to feel attached to your brand. And then they're more likely to follow you. They're more likely to buy from you because they feel like they found a piece of their identity through your, you and you help them do that. So obviously as a brand, you want to help them find that piece of their identity. You want to help them in the long run. If they can feel that you're genuine, they're more likely to follow you, right? So, I mean, if you think about yourself, if you find something about yourself that could potentially improve yourself, improve your hobby, improve your likes and, and avoid the dislikes and all that, you're more likely to trust that brand, that person, that company, right? So same kind of concept here. They want to find and buy things that express who they are. So if you can help them do that via the lifestyle, via the brand, then you're going to be able to close a lot of sales on Instagram. So in our last example, as a scuba diver, what we can do is you might want to attract, let's say newbie scuba divers or expert scuba divers. So these are very, very very different audiences, but it's crucial to know that ahead of time because ex expert scuba divers might want a certain thing. And then of course, newbie scuba divers might want a certain thing as well. So in other words, knowing who your audience is, is very, very important. So uh, think of your own business, what you're trying to sell and build a lifestyle around that and think about you know, what you're wearing, you know, what you buy, the software tools you, you're buying, the, uh, the physical goods you're buying, the eBooks, the uh, educational material that you're buying. Just think of everything as part of that lifestyle. 
all right so it really what this allows you to do is it really allows you to expand potentially your profit margin so instead of selling just one thing you could be selling many different things that surround that particular product now once you've gotten to this point then it's time to think of a logo all right and you can easily get this off of graphicriver.net or you can go to upwork.com that's u p w o r k.com and you can find a graphic designer a logo creator designer and get one created for you now when you create a logo you want to specifically choose something that relates to your niche so a scuba diver attracting newbie scuba divers uh, you could find me a scuba diver logo and name it something that would attract your audience so so newbie scuba divers are obviously going to want to learn from expert scuba divers and of course the same thing so they might be attracted to a certain element but they're still going to have a very different mindset right newbie scuba divers they might might be more likely to buy pretty much everything uh, expert scuba divers may be more reluctant right or more skeptical so that's just something to think about as you begin to build your brand so a quick recap here make sure to create an identity and be ready to inspire all right so that's what it really comes down to and that's what brings us to the next question which is what creates inspiration which we'll talk more about in video number 5 All right, welcome back. This is video number 5 and let's talk about what creates inspiration so that you can inspire people, you can help people get ideas. So, once you have an idea of how you want to go about creating your brand, creating your identity and creating that lifestyle per se, we need to take a closer look at what really inspires people to follow you and become your fan. Now, remember People come to Instagram to get ideas to bring back to either use practically, go buy something, uh, or inspiration to add to their own identity, to their lifestyle or whatever. So the question begs is what inspires people or more specifically what inspires the people that you're trying to attract. So your lifestyle of course or in other words needs to be a true honest life. What what I mean by that? What I mean is that people need to see that you are truly living this lifestyle. Now, it might be a little hard if you're selling a product like an affiliate product that you have no lifestyle in. So, let's say for example, I am trying to sell a scuba diver lifestyle, but yet I am not anything related to a scuba diver. So, in this case, I have to go and read more about scuba diving. I have to kind of indwell in it to the point that I get a better idea of what makes people mad, what people what keeps people awake at night, going to go buy something and all that. So what I might do is I might go to another Instagram profile and take a look at it, one that has a good following and get a better idea of what that lifestyle would look like. I would even maybe go on upwork.com and try to find somebody who might be a scuba diver who loves that area, who's passionate about that area, and maybe I might try to partner with them, all right? Or I might go and try to find a scuba diver expert and get a better idea, maybe spend a day or two with them and get a better idea of all that. And the reason being is that it's just a faster tracking of your success. You might be thinking, well, that takes time. Yeah, of course, because building a real business takes time. And I'm not going to sit here and say that you're going to make lots of money on Instagram really, really fast because any business has it does take time. But really what you're trying to do is trying to figure out and how does a scuba diver think? And then write down what inspires them. Look at the images maybe that get the highest uh, likes, get the highest comments. and write those down. You don't need to copy them, you don't need to plagiarize, but you can just write them down, get a better idea, and use a program that which we'll talk about later on to create beautiful looking graphics that cater to that group to create inspiration. 
all right? So they want to know you're real, so you, you can't really fake real, right? You have to, that's why I say you have to find somebody who is either super passionate that you can partner with and do it from there. Now, for those of you who are, you know, selling your own product and service, that's easy. You already live the life, so that's easy to create a lifestyle. Um, but those are two different routes that you can take. So what inspires people? Well, let's talk about GetStencil.com. GetStencil.com is a really cool, awesome web application that you can use to create really good looking images. So you can create really good looking memes. You can take, you know, the research that you did previously and jot them down, jot the quotes down, find the quotes, um, utilize the quotes, but use getstencil.com to recreate that quote, recreate that beautiful, aesthetically pleasing photo, right? You can use famous quotes that are, are inspirational to your niche and all that. But getstencil.com is just one of many sites. I believe there is canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. And there are a lot of other similar tools like that that will allow you to create beautiful looking pictures. Here's what you can do. As part of a lifestyle, you can create great looking pictures for your lifestyle, your gear, the tools that you use, everything related. So maybe as a scuba diver, you show the scuba equipment that you use. Maybe you have several different types of equipment. Maybe you're a Shopify store and you can say, well, here are three different types of uh, breathing mechanisms that you can use and you can do a review on them. You can show them. You can show what happened. You can even uh, show the lifestyle that day where you tested the, throughout the day. Obviously, like I said, as a product owner, you can do this very easily. But if you're selling something like a Shopify store where you have no bit of knowledge of that, you can, but you can find somebody. You can talk to somebody about it and you can look on YouTube, look on uh, the reviews on YouTube and get a better idea and then use those similar ideas, but turn them into pictures. So you can also focus on creating ideas people can use and you can go on YouTube, you can go on Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest is actually a really good place to find pictures that you could potentially use. But obviously, like I said, do not copyright, do not plagiarize, do not copy the image and use it you know, on your, on your own. Recreate it because at the end of the day, you want to keep yourself safe. You want to do your due diligence and follow the rules. So this is how you can sell indirectly. You're not really selling. You're just showing people your lifestyle, the things that you use, the things you don't like to use. You're basically building a brand and a lifestyle for people to follow. And eventually, you know, people will follow you to the point, like I said, they like to follow their favorite celebrities, their their favorite people, their favorite brands. All right, welcome back. This is video number six. It's called You Get One URL. So that's the reality is with Instagram, you get one URL, meaning one place to add your blog, your website, or your offer. It's not like Facebook where you can create a post every single time and put a URL directly to your offer. You get one URL, so you got to choose it wisely. So the question is, what URL should you use? So in this particular video, I just want to let you know that I'm going to talk briefly about the concepts, the fundamentals, and then I'm going to go to Instagram.com and I'll show you uh, what we're looking at. All right. So with Instagram, like I said, you got to choose one spot wisely, right? Now, the secret here is because you're trying to build your brand and your lifestyle, the ideal place to direct them to is just your website, which could be your WordPress site. And then on your WordPress site, you have your blog, your website, and your offers all on that particular site. So the secret here is because you're building a brand and because you're building a lifestyle, what you want to do is you want to still brand yourself. You don't usually want to just uh, direct people to a sales page. People have taken the action to follow your profile, but they're still getting to know you, right? They're still trying to build that identity, build that relationship with you. 
So you still need to gain their trust. So here's a basic blueprint that you can follow, but from the Instagram profile, I recommend that you direct them to either a blog, your website, or an opt-in with free tips. So you're still trying to build their, their trust. There's still semi-cold traffic. If you send them to a blog with more content, more free information, then that's going to gain their trust. They're more likely to want more, right? Or if your brand, you can send them directly to your website and they can buy the products. But at the end of the day, you can use that. You can use an opt-in with free tips or a squeeze page to build your list first. Because what I found is that a lot of times it takes seven to 12 times to actually touch the person get to know them before they actually buy. So what I mean by touching or touch points means emails. So it could be seven to 12 different emails after they sign up for a freebie. And you can email them using an autoresponder like getresponse.com or aweber.com and just build that relationship through your email autoresponder system. And then once you've built that relationship on a more personal, deeper level, then you can begin to sell things. So we don't advise you to put a URL there where you're selling a product straight. You know, it's actually better if your that link is going to your blog or a, a content piece with tips, maybe tips on scuba diving, the top 10 things you shouldn't do as when a newbie scuba diver or the top 10 gears that I use. So if you think about that, you're telling them the gears that you use and maybe you link them to affiliate links like Amazon affiliate links. So you're indirectly making money by providing free content. So that's another method of indirect selling. Now make sure that you, when you do this, make sure that you follow FTC guidelines And make sure to be transparent with people that you are making money anytime they buy through your affiliate link. By doing this, your goal is to gain their trust and create a true fan that loves you so much they spend at least 10 to 15 minutes per day following you, seeing, you know, what's happening in your life, watching, you know, looking at the good times, the bad times, uh, basically the life of your brand. Now, you might be thinking, well, what if I'm not a person? What if it's just a brand? Well, same thing. You can show uh, the lifestyle of the brand, what the brand is doing, what the brand is going to do, like upcoming sneak peek previews of what the brand is doing. Because Instagram, if you notice, is a lot about curiosity, a lot about uh, sneak peek previews. So that's the end goal. So what I want to do now is just hop on over to Instagram.com and let's talk about what we just talked about. All right, so Instagram is a mobile app, so I can't show you a ton, but I can show you at least a few things. But if you go to Instagram.com slash Instagram, you'll be able to find the search bar. If you go straight to Instagram.com, then you'll be met with a screen that says you'll need to download the app. But as you can see here, you get one URL and the one URL is going to be located basically at the top inside your description. So if you notice, if I take a look at some of these images, let's say this one, this one here, you'll see that it has a lot of text. You got hashtags, so you could use hashtags as a means to direct people to a certain place, but you can't really enter a URL in here. So that's why that one URL has to be used wisely. Now you can see, like I said, with Instagram, their profile, you can see that they're directing you to their blog. They're still trying to gain your trust, right? So they've not directed you to a certain product, but of course that's Instagram. So they could direct you to Instagram.com, but they, what for whatever reason they chose to direct you to a blog but let's go up the top here and let's type in scuba diving and let's just choose this one here 
So as you can see, this guy has 696 posts, 117,000 followers, and he is linking right here. So let's see what he's linking to. So scuba diving.com slash. So obviously this person doesn't own scuba diving.com. It's a photographer spotlight. So it looks like they're, they're linking here to show you that, Hey, I am really a scuba diver, but what she could be doing is if they wanted to monetize he or, or Beth Watson here, she could be directing people to a blog that showcases uh, scuba diving and all that. Now she's more into photography, so she's probably going to track people who are in photography. So it's not really going to be scuba diving equipment, but rather people are probably going to want to know, Hey, what camera are you using? What equipment are you using? Uh, what scuba diving equipment are you using and all that for the purposes of photography? So you see how in this example, it may not be necessarily she's selling scuba dive equipment, but rather than she's attracting a specific type of mindset. So you have to get an idea like who are you attracting? So in this case, scuba divers who love photography. This person obviously does not have a URL, so he's losing out on, you know, making income. And that's probably not the reason why he's on here. But as you can see here, uh, camping tent, 44,000 followers. He could be redirecting people to a blog. Or you could also do a Shopify store, but a blog would be better because then you're still ba basically building trust and uh, you can send them to, from the blog to a lead capture page where they can you know, get freebies and all that and build your list. So what I found over the years, as far as making money goes, building a list is key. If you don't have their name and their email address or just their email address, then you're going to lose them. And they're going to forget about you and all that. So that's why having a URL is so crucial. But those are just some examples of what you can do. You don't have to follow this step by step. But if it makes sense for you just to put a Shopify store, just do a Shopify store. Uh, just don't think too much about it. But these are just some examples of what you can do with the one URL. Hello and welcome to video number seven and let's talk about how to sell on Instagram. Now you understand that selling indirectly is what works. Let's talk about how you can make money. If you follow this blueprint, then by now you have understood how to create a true fan that loves and is willing to follow you. You know, they want to buy because they feel connected to you. They feel that they have a kind of they figured out their identity and part of that identity is part of uh, you helping them and they can feel better. So that's why they want to buy from you is because people like to buy from people who they like. And people don't like to buy things from uh, people they don't like. I mean, think about that. Pretty simple. So whatever you might be, scuba diver, business person, artist, whatever you brand might be, the question begs, how do you get people to buy your products? So we briefly covered a little bit about this already, but I'm just kind of recapping and reemphasizing this. But what about your Shopify e-commerce store products? Well, you can simply create a store that showcases the product that fits the lifestyle that you are portraying on your profile. You can create quotes. You can create pictures, you can create inspirational images that talk about specific products on your Shopify store. So if you think about like a sneak peek preview for a movie, this is basically it. You could do that for a short period of time and say, hey, it, by the way, I was able to negotiate a special deal for you. And let's say you direct them to your Shopify e-commerce store. You could do that. And then you reveal that in the store and you can say for the first 100 people, I'm going to give you X percent off and then the price is you know, going to go up from there. So you can utilize scarcity to drive people to your store and buy those products. So you're thinking about there's a little bit of marketing involved in this as well. 
So you can also do this with affiliate products or even products or services that you own. So let's say, for example, that you have a training course on the X niche. You create a Instagram lifestyle post that relate to people's lives after they take your course, perhaps. So you could show people who took your course. You could show maybe it's a scuba diving training course and maybe how to start out with scuba diving as a newbie or something. So you could create posts related to that, posts related to, uh, if you go through the training course, uh, you'll be able to get to this point where, like me, where I am able to go scuba dive wherever I want to and do this and that kind of thing. Um, you can also cross niches as well. You could have like a business owner who's doing scuba diving. Say, I'm able to, get, to go out and do whatever I want because I run my own business. And if you like to, you know, check out this profile for my business, you can. Or you can mix it in. You can be the scuba diving uh, business person. You know, you can mix the different niches in it. But just keep in mind that you don't want to deviate too much from that target mindset because the more broad things are, the more general things are, uh, you actually lose money that way. So the more specific, the better. So you can show the results and the benefits and you're likely to sell without even having to sell. You don't even have to sell. But when it comes to actually selling and pushing the sales, you can insert a little bit of scarcity. You don't want to do too much, but a little bit of scarcity like the, this is going to end at a certain date or a certain time, or there's only a hundred people or 50 spots left. You can do that. That's fine, but don't do too much of it on Instagram. And that's why Instagram is so powerful because if you don't like selling, I mean, you can sell really well just by showcasing your lifestyle and that's it. Now you can also leverage videos and Instagram is allowing you to do that. But keep in mind that with Instagram, you have a very short video length about, I think it's about 15 seconds or so, but a lot of videos you see that are 10 second clips. So they're really jump cuts, meaning they show what the person wants to see and then they jump to something else and jump to something else. So it's not like an, like a YouTube video where you can expend it or extend it to like 10 minutes or something. So just keep in mind that they have to be really, really short. And another thing is, while this is one way to get more eyeballs, you don't want to show your company logo at the beginning of the video. So you'll see a lot of people do like intro videos or outros on their YouTube videos. You can't really do that with Instagram because you're going to lose their their attention span. Instagram is quick, fast, easy, short, straight to the point kind of thing. So if you could explain your product, maybe the scuba diving gear really, really fast, you could show the scuba diving gear. You could show you like jumping in, you know, and putting it on, jumping in and they have to be really short. So basically you can tell a story with one second here, one second here, one second here versus a YouTube video, of course, it would be more so like, you know, you watch them, it's like 10 minute video or five minute video or even a few minute video. You just can't do that with Instagram. So you can actually lose eyeballs if you show an intro video on Instagram. So you don't want to do any of that. All right. So welcome back. This is video number eight. We're going to talk about sponsor posts. So congratulations. You've reached the end of this video course and this is the last video. All right, so if you just start out with Instagram, it's obviously hard to make money right off the bat, right? Because you don't have anybody following you. But how do you grow your account rapidly? Well, there's actually a way you do have to spend some money. So if you're looking for a free way to do it overnight or, or over a week span time, uh, you're not going to be able to do that. So you're going to have to spend about weeks or so building up your Instagram profile and the way you do that is simply by posting a lot of images. Now, using sponsor posts is a great way to leverage people who are bigger than you that have huge, huge amount of followings. So you could either approach people to do this or you could go to sites to do that, which is a lot easier. But this is not a hack. It's not a software. You're simply leveraging Instagram users with large following. So I could approach somebody who's a scuba diver, 
maybe that guy who's not even selling anything and ask him, hey, I noticed that you have 117,000 people. I was wondering if you would be willing to create a post for me directing people to my uh, scuba diving product or something. Um, you could even say, hey, I'll give you 50% cut if you do it for free or something. So you can negotiate in different ways doing that. But I recommend that you start out using the, some certain sites that I'll talk about in just a minute. So what you're doing is you're leveraging people who have followings and saying, hey, can you sponsor me, uh, promote me basically. Now, this is how big brands actually are able to build really, really fast followings. So if big brands are doing this, this is something you can do as well. So a lot of big brands have found that they can't just move into a market and just dominate the market. They have to gain trust. And the way they gain trust is they buy a lot of sponsored posts. So you basically pay them anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks to get them to post. Now, some of these sponsored posts are really, really big Instagram users and they'll charge you thousands of dollars. So obviously you can't start out with that unless you have a lot of money, you could do that, but I don't recommend that you do. But this is something that you could do and you can make money as well. So I'm really talking about this right now as a building your profile, but you can use it as you grow. Let's say one day you have 10, 20, 30,000 followers. You could also sell sponsor posts as well. So, like I said, a lot of brands realize they cannot reach specific audiences, especially because nowadays people want to connect specifically with people that they identify with. How do you go about leveraging small bloggers' audiences like these big brands? So, what you do is you find Instagram influencers in the specific niche that you are around, you pay them, and you pay them to do a shout out. So you can do the same thing. You can easily get people to do a shout out about your profile, your product and your service, which is basically your profile. So that's why building your brand is key. So you want to make sure you build somewhat of a profile first, maybe spend about a week or so uh, populating it with beautiful images first before you get people to your profile. Because let's say that you purchase a $100 shout out and you get people put to your profile. If people don't like your profile, it's just like a sales page. If people don't like the sales page, they're not going to stay. They're not going to follow you. So you want to make sure that you populate it to a certain point where you have beautiful looking images. At least the nine first images are really, really good. And you track that specific type of person who is seeking that specific type of identity, that specific lifestyle. And then you start utilizing these methods to build your profile. So think about it. If you find a scuba diver user that has a million people driving scuba diver, diving fanatics to your scuba diving training center, I mean, think about how many targeted prospects you're going to get, right? See how powerful this is. So let's talk about a short list of where you can go to actually do this. You can go to shoutcart.com and pay people money. The nice thing about this is you can come here, you can find people specifically targeting specific demographics and specific interests and specific hobbies. You can go to buy, sell, shoutouts.com. You can even go on fiverr.com. Although I would warn you, if you go here, you'll notice that some of them are, some of these Instagram profiles could be developed with software. Do the software generate tons of followers? They could be fake, so you want to keep that in mind. A lot of Instagram profiles have a lot of fake followers. So you don't want to be paying somebody $100 or even $500 for that matter to send somebody like fake people to your, your profile. So that's just something to think about on both ends and something to, to protect yourself with. So you can do this one little hack to build your profile, and as you grow, you can do the same thing and sell these types of sponsor posts. Now, keep in mind that when you do this, you do need to kind of let people know, hey, this is a sponsor post. 
because due to FTC guidelines, you need to have transparency and they want to make sure that you're letting your followers know, hey, this is a paid post. Somebody's paying me to post this, you know, kind of thing. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video course and just go ahead, implement these methods. The really what it comes down to as a recap is finding that lifestyle, finding that identity, building that brand and attracting the right person. So that really is, comes down to conversions and then traffic and all that. The higher your, your conversions are, the higher you're going to convert your traffic. So rather than, you know, you send a hundred people, and only one person converts into a follower, you could send 100 people and even 20 people or 30 people would actually convert into a follower. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video course as much as I enjoyed teaching it. And without further ado, make sure that you implement and take action.